Hello and welcome everyone. Uh, my name is Corwin Thompson. I am one of the lead marketing specialists at the Monogram Design Center in Chicago. I'm um, just going to give you all a brief overview before I hand it over to Chef John, who's going to give you some great use and care tips for our monogram appliances. But I first wanted to thank everybody for joining us. This is our final week of monogram table talks, and it's very bittersweet. We've enjoyed every single one. However, we're so excited to announce that the Monogram Design Center in Chicago is now open. So we wanted to um, just let you all know that we are doing in-person and virtual still product consultations. So um, we are very happy to walk you through any one of our products in person at the Monogram Design Center in Chicago or virtually from the comfort of your own home. We're here with you through the entire journey from product selection to installation and beyond into ownership. We also host an in-person or virtual chef conversation and demonstrations with our executive chef, John Liddell. And whether you are exploring which appliances are best for you and your lifestyle, or you purchase them and you wanna learn how to use them better, um, we can definitely set you up with an appointment with chef John. Um, he will go through everything with you. You can cook along with him um, from, from your own home virtually, or you can come in for a demonstration. And the beauty of this new virtual world is that we can be anywhere across the country and we can assist you virtually, even though we are, we are here in Chicago. Um, we've learned and honed in on this skill, so we are very happy to do that for you. Um, just um, there is a email address um, on this slide. You'll see the MDC chai at geappliances.com. Please email us anytime at that email address to set up any kind of product consultation or cooking demonstration. We'll be happy to help you with that. Um, and that being said, if you want to see something in person, you aren't local to Chicago, you can also contact us um, via that email address and we can uh, connect you with a monogram sales manager or a designer engagement leader in your market where they can show you displays at different resellers all around the country. So that's a really great option as well. Now, on to the nitty gritty before I hand it over. Um, some of you might be new to Teams, so we just like to show everybody how to utilize it. Um, so you will have a toolbar that's on the bottom of your screen towards the middle and you'll see icons there. So the first icon on your left is going to be the video camera icon. This is going to allow you to be on or off camera. Please feel free to join with your camera on. We'd love to see all of your faces. If not, we totally understand too. To the right of that is the microphone icon. You can mute and unmute. Um, just in the beginning of the presentation, we'll mute everybody just because we if everybody's not on mute, we get some feedback, but please, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to unmute. Uh, then there's the raise your hand function. If you have a question, not sure when to ask, feel free to raise your hand and we'll call on you uh, when, when we have a chance. And then to the right of that is the chat box. This is a really great way uh, to ask a question or comment. If you don't want to unmute yourself, you can ask any time and we'll get to you when we can. And then one of the most important ones is the participants icon on the very right. This is how you are going to be able to pin Chef John, which means that his screen will take up your whole screen so you can see him fully. So what you're going to do, you can all do this with me if you'd like. Click the participants button and then you will see a list of all the participants in this meeting. You're going to find John Liddell. You, you will see three, three dots to the right of his name. You're going to hover your mouse over those dots and you will see a um, menu. So then you're going to click pin and once you pin his name, his screen will show up fully for you and that will be the best way to view the presentation. And now I will shop, stop sharing my screen and hand it over to Chef John. Thanks, John.
Thank you, Corwin. I appreciate the introduction. I really appreciate seeing your slides reminding me of what we do here in the showroom. So I'm still going to be doing some cooking eventually. We're going to have some demonstrations and events. That's very encouraging. But what I love about what you guys put together there, and thanks again for doing that, is, um, you know, the last bit about being virtual and, and being kind of accessible to our customer base, our owners across the country, means um, what I'm going to do here for you today, I can do a virtual version of, of, of that for any customer, any owner, um, wherever they're at, because use and care is so personal. It's so much about how you use the product. It's so much about how you want to take care of your products. We don't all care to know anything about it, um, but then once something breaks, we want to know why it happened. Uh, so the fact that any of our sales managers out there, any of our owners that are on the call um, can reach out, set up an appointment with myself or one of you guys, just to go over some of these tips and tricks, things that we've learned in the, uh, by being in the trade for a long time, and just pass that over to you guys. So please use us in that front as we start gearing up to use the showroom more and more live. We don't want to go away from our reach to all of our customers and owners across the country. So let's use that. Today, again, all about use and care. Use and care is kind of where we start in this industry as a chef. No one ever told me that we're going to teach you to cook, but first we're going to teach you to clean for about five years and teach you how to take care of things and teach you how to, you know, just make sure that this is going to be here today and last tomorrow because of the work you put in or just knowing how the machinery um, operates in a commercial kitchen. Here in the monogram kitchens, we kind of have to do the same thing. We have to keep up on things. We want to use the right products. We want to use the best methods to take that take the least amount of time to keep our product looking beautiful. So what I want to do for you today is going to be more of a sprint than like a long distance run. Because normally when I'm doing these use and care classes, what I'm doing is a very specific model for a very specific customer, getting deep into their lives and how I think it's best to clean it. I've got, I've got my camera set up on a cart today. So I'm gonna take you on a little tour all around the showroom. We're gonna hit about three or four different areas. And when I mean a sprint, there are like, I can't waste any time in between point A and B. Alex has told me to run, to get my steps, to get my heart rate up. So we'll do that. We're going to start very basic, though, right here on refrigeration. Why refrigeration? Because a lot of the steps we're going to talk about today actually just kind of go across the whole brand. We have stainless on refrigeration. We have stainless on pro ranges. We have stainless on under counter units, stainless, stainless on wall ovens. So when you see a similar um, surface, know if I've already talked about cleaning stainless, that same practice can be used on it. I chose to go in front of our side-by-side 42-inch here today because what I did is two different app applications on here. And you may or may not be able to see. I know with, with virtual, it is hard to see. But what I'm going to show you is what I did because I've got a sous chef in my life. A lot of you guys know Mr. Nick. Um, he's taken more than great care of a lot of us. And occasionally, more than occasionally, we get along. Get along. Occasionally, we have a disagreement on what the best practice of something is. And for us, it's always a laughing matter because it truly really doesn't matter which way you go as long as you're happy with the end result. So we do keep two different stainless products in here. Chef Nick likes a glass cleaner, you know, this blue product, and just a simple paper towel. Sometimes I see him with a microfiber in his hand. So what we did is treated this side of the refrigerator with that glass cleaner. Now I will say, and Nick will tell you this as well, that it's more elbow grease. It's harder to clean. It, it, it streaks a little bit more, but I'll agree with him as well when it's finished that you're left with a really clean, almost raw looking kind of stainless steel surface. A stainless steel surface that just has a little bit more maybe dullness to it, um, doesn't shine so, so much. And some folks are looking for that. That seems to be what he's attracted to. For me, I clean stainless a lot, not more than him probably, but maybe I'm a little more lazy than he is when he cleans it. And I prefer something that's oil-based, um, and this is like a Wyman stainless steel cleaner here. This is a lot easier to use, guys. I coat it down, and with just a few wipes with my microfiber, and you know, I feel like after having a microfiber for 10 years, do I even need to spray anything on it? It's probably saturated enough. And you just wipe down, and it gets all those little, um, little kind of dust balls off there and leaves a nice clean surface. What the oil-based product though for me lacks it, or, or falls down on is that 
it shows fingerprints more in between cleanings because it keeps, you know, think of that oily surface. I have large mastiffs, so those, that, that hair could stick to that, that oil just a little bit more. Yeah, I see some faces out there going, okay, maybe not so much on the oil. Yeah, but once you use the glass cleaner, a little bit of, 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 of dirt sticking there a couple of weeks later is gonna be, be fine. So whether you use a glass cleaner product, and unfortunately the ones for glass cleaner products that I find um, best are your aerosol types that foam up and it's just what works best. I do use the Windex and the Method brands and some of those all natural, and they'll vary just a little bit on how much you have to polish to get the streaks away. Um, and then on the oil based, again, there's a ton of brands out there. The Wyman's brand is, is great. And then again, anything aerosol seems really good for that. I don't care for some of the uh, non aerosol brands, but I know why people choose one over the other in that regard. Now, so for refrigeration, pro ranges, all of that can be used. The other thing I wanna say, and in this day and age, isn't sanitation so important? Isn't making sure everything's thick and span, perfectly clean important? What a lot of us do is take maybe that glass cleaner product or this stainless steel product, and we go, well, it's been two, three weeks since we cleaned the outside of our refrigerators. Oh yeah, and our hands are always clean when we open it, right? Sure. Um, and when do you sanitize this? A lot of times we don't. We spray this on there and go, darn, it looks clean. But you know what, let's get some cleaner on there. Let's use a Lysol, a bleach product, whatever you're into these days. And sometimes it actually shines better when we start by stripping away all of that old cleaner on there and starting with a really clean product. And then you, you can clean it up and polish it very easily. So none of this says, you know, antimicrobial or anything on it. So be sure you're sanitizing down these handles. Even little kids can reach these. So now refrigeration as well, use and care um, and, and how we, we wanna use it and take care of it. We have water filtration in many of our units and we have some different uh, water filters. So these water filters are rated for about six months. Uh, you don't really have to know like, okay, somebody write down on a piece of paper or a sticky note and put it on the board when I put the water filter in. So I remember to change it, right? Like, that's how we all got to the point of not knowing we had to change filters because how do you remember? Well, Monogram, most of these filters are about a six month filter, but guys, it's dependent on usage. Don't you want to change it if you go through six months of water in two months? And do you not want to change it if you only use six months of water every year, or year and a half? So what we have are actually filter alarms on our units that are going to go off and let you know it's, it's time to change the filter. Enough ice water or water to make ice, enough water to drink from the dispenser has passed through there now so that when you get full up, you wanna get it get it changed, go right ahead. Now order a few of these guys. They're not gonna break the bank. They might not be the cheapest thing either, but I like to keep a couple of them on hand because we don't think about it. When that filter button goes off, what do we do? If there's no filter in our hand to replace it with, you silence the, the, the alarm and then you never change it till six months or eight months later after that. All of these, very easy to do. Really happy on our systems here. I've got our 48 here. So it's all just located above. If all of the mechanics are located above, even on our column units now, we've taken those, um, those filters and moved them to a position on the top. Might be just off screen, sorry about that. But there's a position on the top of our column units now where those filters come out to change. On our column units, there's also something fun um, because it being the, the biggest, newest of our refrigeration in the monogram line, we have air filtration in there too. So even if you're like, okay, John, so now I polish the outside of my refrigerator and it looks beautiful, but every time I open it up, you know, hey, it's, I don't really have time to clean it. Well, that's okay. We've got a charcoal filter here that is going to draw air through it, scrub the air clean. And every time you open up your refrigerator, whether you got a hundred scallops in there or brie cheese uncovered from six years ago, um, you're not gonna smell it. You're good to go. 
Now, this guy, again, I, I, I'm going to have to find out exactly how long these last. I know, again, it's like how much stinky cheese do you have in your refrigerator kind of idea. Um, but this was really easy to remove, just a lift up, uh, a lift up hatch inside, and I just pulled it right, right out. Um, the nice thing about this is I honestly don't care how long it lasts. I'm going to order another one, and when the alarm goes off, I'll just put it in because this is based on usage too. So we'll just have these on the ready. I'm assuming that this little guy does not break, break the bank for our customers though. So um, air filtration, very important. Now I do clean my refrigerator out at home. It's cool, we have different removable bins um, on, on our units, shelves that come out easy. Always great to wipe those things down. Um, Always great to also pick a time of year to do it so that you're planning on emptying your refrigerator. It's not, you know, the day before Thanksgiving. It's like, oh, shoot, you know, Grandma Liddell's coming over. She's going to yell at me about my refrigerator. So, you know, really work down that usage before you start. So a little bit about stainless cleaning, a little bit about our fil water filtration, air filtration. Any questions before I move us down the line just a little bit over to our wall ovens? All right. We're looking good. Hold on tight. Here we go. Are we there yet? Are we there yet? All right. All right, guys. So wall ovens. And you know what? Let's go ahead and lump in pro range ovens with this too, this conversation too. And we'll also throw in a couple other things. Um, but wall ovens. You know, we, we run these through their paces every day. We make bacon in them, we make cakes, cookies, um, things get burnt to the bottom, upside down pizzas, you know, and right side up pineapple, uh, upside down cakes. So a lot of mess happens in here and it's intended that way. And we've built it that way. So when we get into the use and care of this, the number one thing is don't be afraid to use your oven. Your monogram oven is built like a tank. And with our new uh, minimalist and statement collections, they're built with more performance in them than we've ever had. So there's gonna be more cooking done in here. So on the care side, we wanted to make it as, as easy to use as it is to cook in. So when we start cleaning up inside, what we did is of course, give you a racking system that stays in the oven, porcelain coated, just like the interior of the oven. So when we go to self clean our oven, we leave the racks in. It's a perfect way to clean the messiest area of your kitchen. Because now we're air frying in here, we're making bacon, we can dehydrate in here, which means little bits are gonna get crispy, dehydrate and just kind of maybe fly all over if your recipe's not right. So we wanna make sure that even the roller rack and the other racks that are set in there, um, just clean up like the interior of your oven. Any rack that you see in a, in a product that is stainless steel um, is actually rated to come out of your oven for cleaning purposes. That's because during self-cleaning, we're gonna hit like 800, 880 degrees in some points um, for our self-cleaning temperature. And when it self-cleans, it would patina those stainless steel metals. It would give them a little bit of a, a, a weird kind of color to them. You'd be like, oh, those were good once. Remember, Two years ago when we bought the oven, they looked different. Ours always look the same. The other thing that doesn't happen with ours is our machining oils don't come off. So I've moved into apartments and houses that have, have the ranges in place and you go to pull that oven rack out and it's rigid and it's hard to move. With the monogram series, those oils don't come off during the um, self-cleaning cycle. And eventually if your ball bearing rack system gets a little rigid. This could take five, six, seven, eight years, 10 years in some people's cases. We actually send a bottle with your, your um, unit. It says graphite lubricant. I'm pretty sure you could probably just eat this stuff. It's food safe, everything. Um, you can't? Okay, never mind. Don't don't take my don't take my advice for that. I, I mean it's it's like all that activated charcoal we eat now in our donuts and and croissants. So same just stuff. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the graphite lubricant, we just apply it to the roller rack system and, and it just extends the, the um, ball bearing system in there and uh, works perfect. Now, again, the racks are removable. We all have a different 
level of cleanliness, craziness, I'd like to call it. And we're all allowed to have that. That's where we look at something under a microscope. And although there's no bacteria or anything there, like eh, just one more pass over with a bleach rag will do, right? I get it. I love that. Well, if you want to take your racks out after self-cleaning cycle, and guys, self-cleaning cycle is adjustable. Um, you can go all the way up to five hours, and someone might have to correct me on this, but it, I believe it's down to like two and a half hours. So you can do a shorter clean, or you can do a long clean because now it's winter time, and who cares if the oven's 500 or 800 degrees in our kitchen. Um, but when you run that, that system, you might pull out the oven racks afterwards because if you had bacon falling down in the bottom, pizza, all kinds of charred stuff, it's going to turn to ash and you're going to want to wipe that out. Maybe you're going to want to wipe it out. If you're cooking that day, it's no big deal. It's not going to hurt anything at all. So you can wipe down that cavity, make it look nice and spick, it, spick and span, put your racking system back in. Now, let's say you don't have two and a half or five, five hours to self-clean. And now it's summertime, you just wanna do a little uh, freshen up on the inside of your oven um, so you can make that, fr uh, that frittata in the morning. We actually have steam clean cycles on here as well. So our, our seven inch LCD screen has all kinds of modes in it, cooking modes, cleaning modes. And of course, one of them is now steam clean. And this is not a steam oven guys, it's a steam clean. It's where we've sloped the bottom of the pan in a fashion that it'll collect about one cup of moisture and then produce steam in the environment. That way we can just wipe it out really easily, have a nice fresh glass, uh, clean glass door on the front and uh, not even see that you were baking in it the day before. Now, that glass door front can be a little bit troublesome. So the, the nice thing about glass is we can see through it. The tough thing about it is it wicks away heat very quickly. When we talk about induction cooking, that's a great benefit. All the heat leaves my glass induction cooktop, everybody's safe, nobody burns themselves. Well, 880 degrees of cooking or of heat for self-cleaning in here burns and chars everything off. That glass door though, wicks away the heat too quickly. It can't get to that temperature basically. And that's why any, anybody across the industry you'll find little baked on bits on your glass front door on your ovens. That's where it takes either a little bit of elbow grease. Maybe I've seen people use razor blades to scrap, to scrape it off. Guys, that just makes me nervous. But if that's your thing, go right ahead for it. Um, I prefer something else to do the work for me. So this is an oven cleaner. They make the yellow kind, um, which is commercial. You know, maybe that's another thing we should have our masks on for. And they make one that is a no fume easy off oven cleaner. That's what I recommend to my clients, but I don't use myself. Um, I use the one that is, is really potent. But what I do is be cautious of surrounding areas anytime we're using a cleaner like this, because maybe you've got, I don't know, marble floors. Um, I know there's granite on countertops. This could stain that. This could take some of the finish away from your cabinetry or something if you're not careful. So I always make sure I'm only getting it on the glass. If you're concerned about overspray, take this outside, spray it on a rag with a glove on and bring that rag back in and just kind of wipe down that area. Um, I'll use this in a lot of other parts of our training today too, just as a spot cleaner for burnt on goods. And that's a really good oven cleaner. So we'll get rid of that real quick. Now, whether you go with a minimalist or a statement piece on our wall ovens or a statement range or our drop-in gas cooktop, now what we have is either brass um, accents on there or brass accents as a option. So this is our gas cooktop option. And you can see these little brass caps that just fit right in there. But you know what brass does over time? It patinas. It loses its, 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 its golden luster there. Um, so what you want to use is a little bit of Brasso cleaner. This is my favorite one. And I use this in a couple of ways. Um, this didn't have much tarnish on it before I cleaned it. So I usually just use my finger and all of that tarnish comes out and it looks absolutely beautiful. Sometimes I'll take maybe like a Ziploc bag and put a little Brasso in there and then drop these little pucks down in there and let them sit in there because again, if I can do anything else while something's cleaning itself, I will. Um, it doesn't matter what it is. Uh, so Brasso works great on those little accent pieces. And now on our statement range is 
and our statement wall ovens. Check that out, a little bit of brass in there too. So we can polish that up really nicely too. It's like detailing, you know, that favorite part of your car, you know, just give it a little extra shine. Those, those brass accents are for that. So Brasso, I don't, I mean, you can use like a paper towel or a magic eraser with this stuff too, seems to work pretty well, but it's got enough oomph in it where it does a lot of the work without you doing anything. Now, let's continue on down the line here. You know, I did forget one thing on refrigeration before I move off of that. When I had those hood grates open and, you're, and all the mechanics are at the top or if they're at the bottom, you want to vacuum out those grates. Um, so I'll show you that just real quick here. I didn't go far, so. Jeff, John, on the way, um, sorry if I'm echoing a bit, but we did have a question in the chat, which I'm not sure if, if you can answer, but Julie Robbins asked if you can wash the charcoal filter and put it back in instead of replacing. I do not know the answer to that. I'd have to look into that. Um, we can get the answer. It's such, I'm thinking no. I mean, I know we use like a charcoal filter like for ventilation, right? And that's something we can put in the dishwasher. Um, I don't know how this how this di this differs, so I'll have to get that answer. I'm sorry. No, no worries. I, I thought that was going to be the answer, but just wanted to ask in case. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if it deteriorates or if it if, if maybe this has something different for odors. Yeah, because it's not like many. You know, it wouldn't have particles necessarily in it because it's for odor. So. Yeah, we'll have to ask the team and, and get back to you on that one. We'll take down your information and make sure we get you the answer. Got it. Cool. Thank so you. So guys, this is what I'm talking about up top when you lift up your lift up grate here. Even if your your mechanics are at the top, it's still breathing through here. So it's sucking up air into there to go into the, the workings of the unit. So it's going to draw particles. It's going to draw grease um, that your charcoal filter doesn't catch or your recirculating ventilation, re recirculating ventilation doesn't catch. It's going to draw stuff up there. So I wipe it down with a hot rag. I'll take my vacuum attachment and get in there. And then definitely in my house, if it has, if it's breathing or has the, the workings on the bottom, I mean, with 300 pounds of dog, I probably try to vacuum that out once a month. So what that's going to do is may is basically ensure the longevity of your product because it can breathe. You know, it's like when we try to go on a run with our masks now, it seems, man, this is so much harder. Well, you take the mask off, obviously more airflow, easier to get down the road. Same thing with refrigeration. Now we're going to take another little trip. So take my cart, pass. Do the showroom. Let's see if we cleaned up today. Uh, looks pretty good. All right. And we're going to walk over to Pro Ranges. Talk a little bit about that, guys. So here we are. Bring this forward. Do some quick cameraman stuff. All right. So Pro Ranges are probably one of the biggest beasts. To, to try to clean, right? They've got a lot of moving parts. There's heavy parts. There's ventilation with bigger parts to it. Um, so you do need to maintain this product. This is not a product that you go, you know what, once every year I kind of, you know, detail it. You want to clean as you go on a pro range. There's a lot of heat. There's open flame. There's not anything self-clean on the top. The ovens below are just like we talked about, self-cleaning, safe, all of that. Um, so they uh, they do an excellent job. And the pro range ovens are self-cleaning, be it a gas or, or, or a dual fuel, natural gas, propane, or uh, dual fuel. So you can do it all in there. But what we want to do, and when I say clean as you go, is to think about these grates and think about these drip trays, first of all. That's because as soon as you get a little bit of cheddar cheese on one of the grates here, it's going to burn on. And the day they push that range out of your house, you're going to say, finally, I got rid of that cheddar cheese burn spot. If something gets on there, I wipe it off right away. 
if I have an overflow or something gets down below here, guys, we sell ranges with six, you know, six, four burners on, on them. Um, why not just move the pan over and keep cooking and wipe up that spot? I tell this to my clients time and time again, because what you won't do is after that's burnt on there is find the way to clean it up. Now, if you get something on here or not, I do clean these quite often. I actually take the whole assembly off like so, and I'll put it down in the basin of my, my large sink and I'll spray it with a, you know, maybe a 409 cleaner, something that has a degreaser in it maybe, and just let it sit in there. And I just stack them all up and let them sit. And then I run the hot water over it. And you can use even a magic eraser or a green scrubby on there, or even one of these guys, just a really abrasive green scrubby that gets into all the pores. This is like a cast iron, iron product. So it gets into all those pores and it comes very clean. The other thing you can do, because, you know, as we mentioned in that um, wall oven talk, is that those oven racks are coated so they stay in the oven during self-clean. Well, what that means is you can take any of our cast iron products that have no rubber on them and put them on those oven racks and run them on a self-cleaning cycle. So it becomes, again, very easy for you to be out golfing while your oven cleans itself. I like that idea. When we get into the inside here, we have the burner caps. Those are all cast iron too. So the idea with those is, yep, throw them right in the oven, throw them in, in the sink, uh, wipe them down. And they stay really nice and clean. Below that, removable burners, right? Our arch nemesis here. These are some of the hardest things, no matter who makes them, to clean in the industry. Uh, everybody, um, you know, they just get gunked up. Cooking's a messy sport. You can see that little spot right on that guy. Yeah, I didn't get that off. Um, what I do for this is I soak them. Um, I'll make a little like really hot, soapy water bath and I'll soak them. Just soak them till the water almost goes cold. Then my magic eraser comes out and I start scrubbing on it, trying to dullen up those spots. That spot, mm, I could probably get that out, um, but anything worse than that, will have a little stain on there for life. So when I cook on my pro range, guess how many of these are dirty? One, right? Just, I cook on, I try to just cook on that one if I'm gonna do all the messy stuff. Of course you get a few pans going, but then you have to be more conscious of cleaning as you go. But that magic eraser and that soaking of these guys um, really cleans these up nice. But with the lifespan of a pro range, you might find yourself like, 12 years down the road going, stainless looks perfect, drip pans look perfect, uh, cast iron looks awesome. These are the only thing that's gunked up. Order another set, pop them in, brand new range. Or as we say at Monogram, right? Just get a new range. <laughs> All right, so that's a little bit about the burner assemblies. The nice thing is we make those removable, not just for soaking, but also for cleaning the drip pans. And whether you're looking at a pro range drip pan or that beautiful stainless uh, stamped piece on our uh, drop in gas cooktop, you can use the same idea of cleaning as you go, especially with that stainless product, because things really get bonded onto there. They really burn on, onto there quick. And then what do you see? Scratches, because that's the only way you try to get it off. Scratch it off, scratch it off, scratch it off. Guys, this easy off or oven cleaner product like this is a life changer, life saver on your drip trays. Remember, these are sealed units, so I can have overflows and nothing's gonna get down below. Um, so it's not gonna come out for me to clean in the sink. But what I will do is make like a kind of a compress with a napkin and just spray a little bit of that oven cleaner on it. And then when I have, you know, the mac and cheese burnt on spot, I just take that, press it on there, leave it for 15 minutes. This stuff will eat through all of that burnt on gunk and you just wipe it up and throw it away. If it's still on there, treat it again. Watch another episode of Grey's Anatomy while it does that, you know? So we've got time for some of this stuff to, to work on its own. But these drip trays, I kid you not, can look perfectly beautiful the whole lifespan of the monogram range. And, and they actually should. Let's see if I'm missing anything on that one. No, I don't think so. So over to some of the little options on our pro range here. 
We've got grill, we've got griddle. Grill is pretty simple. You know, just like at home, you brush your grill down. So we've got a nice grill brush here. This is one of those safety ones that's like spun and wound so it won't like break off in any of your food. Does an awful job of cleaning a grill though, but we'll use it anyways. Um, the old school ones that are dangerous work the best. Um, but don't be afraid while your grill's on to just grill brush it down right in place. Let the particles fall down underneath there. There's a huge infrared gas burner down below that there that's gonna kind of incinerate anything that falls below. Once you've done that in place, turn your grill off, let it cool down. Once it's cold, it's pretty important for it to be cold when you grab this. So once it's cold, and guys, this can actually go into our ovens during self-clean too. So that's all just cast iron, never gonna go bad. Once it's cool, you can remove some of the other parts. This is just a little riser for that grill tray. That can go in the sink and be washed off. Then we've got a little deflector plate here. Pretty easy to remove. There's only just like four little points that that sets down on into a screw head. I don't know if you guys can see that, but basically the heat rises up from the bottom here and hits all these channels. So we have, a, and, and it spreads it even more evenly. And then this also will help catch some of the grease so you don't get so many flare ups. You could probably get, I think we put that guy in the dishwasher, yeah. And then after that, you've got your removable drip tray, which you clean out almost every time you use the grill or depending on what's in there. And when I say clean out, run it under hot water, run it, run it through the dishwasher. There might be people out there going, oh no, Chef John said put my cast iron in the dishwasher. Not your cast iron pan, this drip tray, okay? It's not going to gray out. It's not going to patina. Perfectly acceptable. So what we're left here after moving those parts is just an empty uh, grill basin. And now again, cold grill, take your shop vac, take your vacuum cleaner attachment and just get all of the ash out of there. There's little charred in bits of ash on there that you want to have removed because below that is your infrared burner. And that burner assembly has hundreds of holes punched in it. And if they get blocked up, you kind of kill your evenness of cooking. So then if it's really need, need be, you could take like a safety pin or a little toothpick and just pop out any of those holes that still look blocked. But I'm finding I don't really need to do that. It's burning them off the next time I cook. So after you're done with that, all you have to do is reassemble and you're good to go. I find at home, I'm only doing this a few times a year to clean it out deep like this because it burns so hot. Um, the times that I have to do it more often are when I make a mistake and you know you burn something, you, you, you put too much barbecue sauce on when you know you shouldn't have. Um, there's all kinds of things that can go wrong, wrong in the kitchen. Um, and when they do, that's when, that's when I usually stop and uh, do a deep clean on it and just do everything. It's like punishment, right? Now over here on the griddle, we always have a ton of questions about how to clean a griddle. And I keep promising you guys a griddle cleaning video and we'll see maybe, two, maybe 2021 is my year for that. Um, but today, if anybody's recording it, you can maybe see. So out there on the market are, are a few different griddle cleaning products and kits, I should call them. You know, 3M makes one, there's a couple other out there. Inside these kits are a ton of parts that, you know, like, I'm not sure what you're trying to clean or accomplish. There's too much, it's too confusing. Um, the parts that you do need, basically, griddle pad holder. Probably get that on that little Amazon store somewhere. Griddle pads, these are rated in numbers. If you care, I like a number 86, that's my preference. Some people are, an eight, I think Nick's more of an 84 kind of guy, so. And then, Preference of white vinegar, half, water, half. That's it. The kits come with like chamois and squeegees and uh, all kinds of extra stuff. There's one that sends an orange liquid that has ingredients on it that I can't pr pronounce. And then I'm gonna put my heirloom tomato on top. No way, absolutely not. So I replaced that with just vinegar and water. There are other natural um, um, cleaners like this out there. Some folks use uh, just like soda water on there. They think, they think that works well. I use the vinegar and the water because what it does is actually sanitize while it cooks. So after I'm done or while it cleans, um, 
After I'm done cooking on my griddle, all I do is turn the griddle to low. When the griddle is at low, it allows it to cool down, but still give me a hot surface to clean. A hot surface to clean, meaning a hot pan, always easier to clean than a cold pan. Um, I think I have a pan sitting in my sink at home from eight years ago when I got married. My wife still thinks it's just like all the burnt on stuff is gonna fall off. Doesn't matter how long you soak it, you've gotta clean it warm. So at low, we've got 100 degrees. And then you can turn that off and just scour it and just clean. This is a stainless steel surface. It's not going to absorb liquids. It's not going to absorb layer, flavors and bacteria. And it's going to allow you to polish it back to a perfect stainless steel per, uh, surface every time. Some people like to put their, their griddle pad holder up like that and get the edges. That's perfectly acceptable. Perfect. My disclaimer on cleaning the griddle is don't do it for the first time to impress your friends. Um, because it's not clean. It's not, it's a dirty process. Um, there's a lot of, there's a few moving parts to it. But when you get it down, you'll find that whether you've cooked for two people on the griddle or 50, the cleanup is the same. With the right tools, you're only going to spend about a minute or two on there and have an excellent service. What I love about, you know, you know, people cooking more at home, I've got a lot of clients telling me, John, we've cook on this like three meals a day now because we're always home and we just clean it once. So basically we've cooked all of our meals in one pan and only cleaned one pan and it never has to go in the dishwasher. So it's almost like whose turn is it today to clean the griddle? So I thought that was a fun story about how people are using their griddle just a little bit differently because it is truly a perfect, um, perfect pan, perfect place to cook almost every time. Now, let's see here. I think I got that, yeah. We'll make a quick stop over here at the five and one oven and you can see the sun coming in there. So I got new signage that's not allowing my computer to sit down there. Okay, cool. Um, so five and one oven guys, use and care on this is important, but it's short because this doesn't have self cleaning in it. Um, you know, it's a, it has microwave technology, toaster, uh, precision cook, a broil, convection, bake. We have a ton packed into this small bit of real estate. The one thing we can't get in there is that self-clean. We do have some options though for you. Um, normally, when this is uh, running as a normal oven or a precision oven where it can cook eight times faster than, than a regular wall oven, things are cooking so quickly and skipping the preheat uh, cycle that the interior is not letting the oil bake on while it's cooking. So after the oven cools, I tend to wipe this one out if I'm doing a whole roasted chicken, bacon. Cookies I'm not worried about, you know, baked goods, not so much, but the fatty foods are gonna, are gonna splatter. I wipe them out so that's out of there. And the way I do that is either just a hot wet towel or again, one of my friends, the Magic Eraser. This actually does an excellent job cleaning up the back convection fan system because that's drawing in and throwing out hot air that's full of oil and, and particles. And uh, it, it, that's where it's gonna build up. So I really get in there with, with this guy. And also up at the top where we have that halogen light, that gets really built up because it's doing a lot of work and it's close to the action, meaning the food level. So I always want to keep that clean. If that's not clean, you start to um, decrease the percentage of heat and light that's going to do the work on our food and create caramelization. So we want to keep that very, very clean. If it looks like it's still kind of like stuck on and you're like, I want to get some of that off, we do actually have a microwave uh, clean mode here where we can put a bowl of water in there. Some people put a lemon. I mean, at that point, why not a little bit of lavender and cinnamon too and really get the, the uh, essences going. And we microwave that off and it steams out the cavity of the oven and helps loosen everything inside. When it helps loosen everything, then you go crazy with that magic eraser, rinse and repeat kind of idea. The door, I don't get a whole lot of built up on because it cooks so quickly. It's like the one oven door that is almost always clean. So I like that, but go ahead and hit that with the, the magic eraser too. These stainless steel trims inside, I do use the, the eraser on that too, because you can get a little buildup around um, the, the corners. 
Always remove your trays. These can be tough to clean. You can use like a little bit of that uh, uh, oven or they make a actual pan cleaner that you can soak on there. And that'll bring those all the way back to that brand new. It can remove the little turntable. You can actually remove this little guide here that turns the turntable. And then down below, you're gonna see some like, um, like honeycomb punch out down there. And below that is, is another halogen light that is gonna provide our bake heat. So we don't wanna get anything down in there. Um, so when you're cleaning that, try to keep some liquids and stuff out of there. It's the one thing I, I will tell you, try not to do. Um, but other than that, these clean up very easy. When it comes to the front of any, any of our units, again, we've talked about the stainless, the LCD screens and the black glass guys, you know, that's where, that's where the, the, the trend is right now and they're highly reflective. So, you know, you might want to use um, some, again, some glass cleaner on there and you might want to keep that a little bit uh, close because, you know, it does show some fingerprints and the only way to, to not do that is to not touch it. And the only way to not touch it is to use our Smart HQ app um, just to start everything in your home and have it tell you when to change filters and when to clean things, when your coffee's done. And, and you'll be, you'll, you'll be finger, fingerprint free in your home. I'm going to take another walk unless there's any questions about Pro or 5-in-1 that I didn't get. Yeah, we have about okay. the griddle. Yeah. When when cooking on the griddle, is there anything you shouldn't cook with or use that makes it makes cleaning harder, like sprays, certain kind of sprays or sugars or anything like that? Yeah. So both of those things like oils and sugars can leave a burnt on stain on your your, your griddle, not a stain. I guess that's the wrong way. It could be burnt on. Um, but a little bit more elbow grease on the burnt on oils and the sugars, and it comes right back to brand new. So I don't want to tell people to steer clear of that because, um, hello, butter and sugar, we like to have those things in our food. Um, so it's a byproduct to have to clean that up. Again, when it's on the pan and you're pressing down with that griddle pad, you get a really clean um, area. And again, do it when it's warm, but you don't have to steer clear for it. You know, I might not do candy work on there or something, but uh, you, you should be fine. Great, thank you. Yep, all righty. So we'll grab the computer again, and we're going to go back over to induction kitchen here. I'm coming. All right. I just want to bring you guys in a little bit closer on this one because this one's a fun one. I mean, we always get those induction questions and, you know, is it actually easier to clean? Um, you know, you all know that it's faster to heat up. But a lot of people don't exactly believe me when I, you know, show them like the burnt on stains that I have on there and that it's simple, easiest thing in the world to clean up. You know, pro ranges love cooking on them, um, but you almost go, okay, now that it's time to clean up, I wish I had something different. And many days you just want to make a meal and induction feeds that too. The idea that nothing below the surface gets hot means that as my pan was sitting here boiling water, what I did was purposefully took some red pepper oil and just put it underneath and just let that water boil and that heat go back down. Cause that's what happens, you know, that's life. Things get messy. And when that does happen, we don't notice it because we're having a good time. We're concerned with what's going on in, in the pan. But again, just like the griddle, it should not stop us from cooking with things that we love, things that we want to eat and things that we want to be around. We just want to make sure it's easy enough to take care of after it's after we eat. Um, so that water is just about coming up to a boil. 
We're gonna bring that back later. Some of my oil got burnt out. I'm not sure if you, is that close enough? Can you see any of that, Corwin? Yeah, maybe not. All right, well, you know, I tried there. I should have made a bigger mess. What you want though is again, the right tools for the job. So this is a glass cooktop cleaner. It's like a non-abrasive, you know, I think we used to call it soft scrub at some point. And then this is a glass cooktop cleaning pad. Don't use, you know, oh, John said use a cleaning pad. Don't grab your green one. Don't grab anything abrasive, you know, or, or this old uh, rag will do. You need a glass cooktop scrubby. Go on that little store online. You can buy, buy 50 of them right now, you know, for 12 bucks. I like to let my cooktop cool down because otherwise I get steam off of there. Uh, but if you don't and you're really strong and tough, then just go after it. Um, a little bit of that polish on there, a little bit of elbow grease. And again, it takes it right off. I've had rings on this center burner here that are, are totally caked on, burnt on. And when I'm done cleaning them, after this same amount of time, they look 100% perfect. What I like about a lot of these cleaners, cleanser, I think we've lost John. Hang on. Oh, there he is. Somebody removed me. Uh oh. <laughs> That's what it said. That's all right. I'm back. Yeah, it said you've been oh. in the meeting. I said, man, that's like the old, you know, on, on stage when they just used to get that hook and just haul you off stage. Oh. All right. first so time can, for everything. Well, yeah, then. sure. You can see that polishes up really nicely, very easy. A lot of people will use a glass cleaner or a method cleaner on there too to, to um, make sure there's zero streaks, but I find that that polish does an excellent job. You can sanitize with your Lysol cleaners, of course. Now, I use in this installation, it's a flush in installation with the countertop. So we have a little seal down here that's caulked in. And with that seal, you can get some egg in there and some other little pieces that are stuck down below there. And you can use a paper towel to kind of finally get that out. But I like to use this compressed air. It just gets all of the gunk out of there for me. All right, basically on the induction top for cleaning and care, that's really all you have to do. I know I was asked to speak about some dishwashers today. Let's see if I can. I've got a couple of minutes, don't I? Yeah, five minutes. Yeah, as long as my computer is doing. All right, so dishwashers, not a whole lot to say about those, but there is a lot to say about ours and how it helps, um, you know, keep the dishes clean and keep itself clean just a little bit. Um, we have those long, high heat cycles that we can run on there with our bottle jets running and with our silverware blasters running and all of our arms spinning in different directions. Um, so when we clean on a very long cycle right away, we're passing all that hot water, high temperature uh, through our system to make sure that's good and flush out. When we run a clean, cleaning cycle, there's different cleaning products for your dishwasher. I don't know if, anyone, if everyone knows this. You clean your dishes in your dishwasher. You still need to clean your dishwasher to make sure that we're not washing things over and over again with that piece of corn that got stuck in there three years ago. Um, so get a pack of these, follow the instructions, it not only cleans out your dishwasher, it makes it shine nice and bright, smell nice and bright, perfect way to keep the longevity of your dishwasher. We also have a couple other systems that are gonna help um, with the cleaning process. And one of them is a removable filter. So right away, we pull that filter out. That filter can go into the sink and be sprayed out, be scrubbed out, depends on what's caught in there. 
but it's meant to be cleaned, guys. It's not meant to be forgotten. So I take mine out. I mean, every every chance I can, I think of it when I'm loading the dishwasher, I take it out. Is it necessary to do it every every time? No. Is that part of my cleanliness craziness? Yes. And there's a lot of people that once they see food in their filter once, they will probably clean it out every time, and it will actually help your dishwasher clean better and live longer. Other thing that will is that if anything gets past this filter, we have a hard food disposer down there in the bottom. Going to chop up all that little bit, pass them right out of the system, so they're not coming back in or clogging something, causing poor dishwashing. So, again, on the care of the dishwasher, I think you know the dishwasher is the one product that's doing a ton of work for us. Um, you know, it's hours and hours of work while we're doing something else. So to run some cleansing packets through it, to give it a little bit of TLC like that, and it's going to return your just your crystal clean uh, glasses and dishware for the rest of its life. Now, I think that's all about what I've got today. I don't know if there's any questions or anything that we didn't speak about that somebody wants to, to hear about. No? I just uh, asked in the chat, but we don't have any further okay. questions. It looks like we're good. 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 Well, guys, it's been fun chat with you today. I know I'm back again on Thursday with my friend Gene. That's going to be such a fun conversation, so I hope everyone joins us. Uh, again, we're here at the showroom now, guys, so please let us know what we can do for your customers or your sales reps, anybody that's out there. We're here to help and answer the question. Part of, uh, you know, the greater monogram team. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you soon.